My name is Chris Egloff. I am kind of a dork, super geek on lithium batteries. Um, I am a consultant for the United Nations, and I write regulations for the st uh, shipping and storage of lithium ion batteries globally. I'm on several standard writing organizations, and pretty much all day, every day, all I do is consult people on the regulations today and what's coming in the future. And unfortunately, lithium batteries have become proficient and everywhere. It's in our pocket, it's in our bags, and it's coming into our facilities. And the regulators, the fire code marshals, the insurance companies are just now catching up with the dangers of lithium ion batteries that they can uh, actually potentially go into and the hazards that come along with it. Um, I always like to tell people, and I, I like to hearken this as much as I possibly can, lithium batteries are inherently safe. It's a great technology and it is fantastic. It's gonna change our world. The problem is, is the potentiality of them when they go into thermal runway or rapid disassembly, it creates a very hazardous situation. Uh, it can kill people. It can start massive fires, as we'll get into in a second. And people are forcing you to take something that is inherently safe and regulate it in a completely different way that's gonna have huge ripple effects within your facility and your, how you work with lithium batteries. Today, we're gonna to get into a little bit of workarounds that you can do from a packaging standpoint that can get you some alleviation from that. But hopefully you get some useful uh, information out of this uh, slide deck that we have for you today. But I implore you, call us, have us get on conference calls because I could literally talk for about 15 hours and still not cover everything that's going to possibly affect you. There's no way I can do it in a slide deck today. So if you have any interest, reach out to me or Joel, we'd be happy to work with you guys. So this is when lithium batteries go bad. We've all seen it. New York uh, is absolutely having fits right now with people repairing their own e-bikes or using aftermarket batteries and they're having apartment fires. Some of the more notable ones are those Porsches and Lamborghinis that decided to go up in the flaming ball of fire on the ships, and more importantly, the South Korea government on their data center, they were not prepared with the lithium batteries that they had. They had a lithium battery fire. It completely burnt down their data center, and they did not be able to, they could not use some of the critical information that came from that data center for weeks afterwards. It was a huge national disaster. So people are realizing that when things do go bad, you have to make sure that you prepare for it. So it's only gonna get worse the more things like this happen, so you need to be prepared. The thing that's going to affect you most right now is probably the fire code. So the IFC, International Fire Code, in 2024, which they published in 2023, has come out with new rules and standards for how you store lithium batteries. Not ship them, which is a completely different regulation that we can help you out with as well, but if you store them. Uh, you have to have fire safe rooms, two-hour fire barrier walls, sprinklers, these things can cost $250,000 to a million dollars to build inside of your facility. That's if you have the square footage in your data center right now. And if you do have the square footage and you build it, they're changing those rules and regulations even as we speak. The fire safe room that you created even two or three years ago probably don't meet the new standards because they've added things like explosion proof because a lithium battery will, uh, when it goes to the top runaway, put off uh, flammable gases. And if the stoichiometric mix hits a certain point and something else catches on fire or sparks it, it can create an explosion. So not only is it good enough to have a fire safe room, you have to have a ventilation system that is up to code to be able to pull all those hazardous gases out and from the EPA's perspective, filter them properly so you're not polluting the air once it goes outside of the room. So a lot of people are being forced to keep offsite storage of lithium batteries. So you're paying now tens of thousands of dollars a month to have your lithium batteries that you need in your facility to work and flow properly, you're paying for that offsite. And that is obviously a logistical nightmare in your facility when you need to have just-in-time delivery, if you're doing rack uh, decomming, or you have to go check a server to make sure it's down and get it back running, and you don't even have lithium batteries in your facility. That becomes a huge problem, and the International Fire Code is addressing that. There's a little bitty clause inside of that IFC code that says, if you can prove that you can contain the hazards of the lithium ion battery at the packaging level, 
then you do not have to have any of those fire safe rooms. You don't have to have the fire barrier walls. You don't have to have the sprinklers. You don't have to have anything. And that's kind of where AmeriCase comes into play. We make packaging that can contain thermal runaways. So the battery lives in our packaging when it's not in the server or being worked on. Anytime you have a lithium battery, if you keep it in our packaging, then it's safe. You can keep it anywhere in your facility. Your fire marshals are gonna be okay with it. Your insurance providers are gonna still insure you. They're probably gonna give you a discount based off of that extra layer of safety. The International Fire Code is a funny thing though. Not everybody has to adopt it. They have to adopt one of them. Like I was telling someone earlier, if you're in Iowa, probably they're still on IFC 2018. And the rules and regulations of that are completely different. Each municipality, each state chooses whichever fire code they want to do. New York and California right now have already adopted the IFC 2024. And my guess is that within the next year or two, because lithium batteries are becoming more and more proficient than everywhere, every one of the cities and municipalities are probably going to adopt the IFC 24, which puts all these regulations and standards in place. So you may or may not even be compliant by those codes right now. Luckily, not a lot of people know this, but in a year, year and a half's time, once they adopt them and you were to be audited, they can give you a pretty hefty fine and completely change how you're doing business if you're not up to code. The other one is the NFPA. It's basically just a, like an international fire code. And they basically have harmonized with the International Fire Code to be able to say how you need to transport and store batteries in your facilities. And uh, so it doesn't matter which one you ultimately adopt, they're both going to be regulated the exact same way. A little bit about AmeriCase. Um, who knows about the Galaxy Note 7 recall that happened several years ago, blowing up on airplanes? So I was the person that sold the package to Samsung to get those back. Um, when it comes to hazardous materials, we are the foremost expert. About 90% of all Consumer Product Safety Commission recalls for the last 15 years have been in probably an AmeriCase packaging. Um, we have a 100,000 square foot facility in Texas. Everything is in-house. Um, we do about $50 million a year, and of that, 90% of it is surrounded by hazardous materials and more specifically lithium batteries. So all day, every day, this is all I do and all I consult and all the packages that I, I create. Uh, as stated before, I am on the SAG 27 standard for shipping lithium batteries. I'm also writing the J3303 uh, standard for storage of lithium batteries. Um, how many people in this room probably store lithium batteries in a yellow U-line flammable cabinet inside their facility somewhere? Are you storing in any cabinets at all when they're not in use? Yes, a couple of people. So the problem with that is, is the basic U-line flammable cabinet, the world likes to say if you got a 90 minute fire rating or a two hour fire rating, then it's good enough and it's safe enough. The fact is lithium batteries will blow right through the side of all of those cabinets. There is no packaging standard for storage of lithium batteries that has been written yet that actually keeps it safe. So is it best practice today? Yes. Is it gonna work in the future? No. And the worst part is, is if you bought thousands of dollars worth of these cabinets that you think you're being safe enough, once the J3303 standard comes out where you actually have to push batteries into thermal runaway in your packaging and prove containment, you're gonna probably have to throw all those away and buy new J3303 cabinets. So we're writing those standards right now. Also, at the UN level, there's only four basic designations for shipping and storing transport of lithium ion batteries. Packed in equipment, in equipment, out of equipment, or packed with equipment, lithium ion or lithium metal. Right now, the United Nations is forcing battery manufacturers, not yet, but within the next year or two, to test all their lithium batteries and purposely push them into thermal runaway. This isn't just your basic UN 38.3 testing. This is charge your battery up to 100% standard charge, push it into thermal runaway, and based off of how big of a boom it makes, how much fire and how much destruction is gonna dictate how you package that, not only shipping, but storing. So if you're a battery manufacturer that's trying to do high output batteries, like for your lawn equipment, I push thermal uh, batteries into thermal runaway all the time. Matter of fact, we've tested more lithium batteries than anybody else in the world probably, including the US government. Uh, we consult with them all the time. Some batteries, when they go into thermal runaway, perform beautifully. They barely puff the smoke at 100% state of charge. Other manufacturers that actually design their batteries to give the good output can have huge rapid disassemblies. And that's what we mean when an 18650 cell goes into thermal runaway, it literally blows up. Uh, the projectile can shoot like a 22 bullet, 
and it can actually rip through metal packaging. It can be that severe. So the United Nations is just forcing these people to know what are the hazards when it goes in the thermal runaway, and they're dictating how those people will be forced to ship and store them. And if you're buying those batteries, and they happen to be more hazardous than others, then those ramifications are going to come down to you at the facility level as well. So it's important to know. In the IFC code, there are exemptions. So if you're under 30% status charge, you're okay. So the state of charge of the battery is critically important because at 30%, 20%, or 10%, when it's basically not very charged at all, if you push it in thermal runaway, it's benign. It almost does nothing. The higher you get up, 50, 60, 70, 80%, the more hazardous it is. The problem with that is, is all OEMs now ship all their batteries at 30% state of charge because of the embargo on airplanes, they just can't ship. So when you receive the lithium batteries, they're inherently safe. But the second you start using those batteries and charging them in racks or in your laptops and facilities, you never truly know what state of charge they're at. And you have to assume they're all at 100% state of charge. So once the regulators realized that, they basically said, if you're under 30% state of charge, no hazmat rooms, you don't need any of that stuff, it's safe. But the second you start using it, and they say, once you go over 15 cubic feet of batteries, and that's not in one space, it doesn't mean you have to have 15 cubic feet of batteries in one spot to be regulated. It means if you have 15 cubic feet of batteries within your entire facility, if you put them together, that's when you have to use these fire sim frames. So it really starts dictating, you have to start doing math and understanding what level of lithium batteries you have in your facility and what are those standards you're gonna to have to hit. And again, I, you can look at that slide and take a picture of it, but we probably would be beneficial to have a conversation with you guys to really describe that stuff because it can be very convoluted and how it works. Guys, again, reach out to me anytime. Joel will take over. He's a data center expert and we hired him just for this reason. He speaks your language, I don't, but I'd love to help you anytime. Just give me a call, thank you.